What is good Tesla family, it's Ray J back with another video and in this one I want to break down what's going on with Tesla Spy, Nvidia, the QQQ and a couple of other tickers. I'm going to break down what's happening to the overall market right now, what news just came out that's very important and what the data suggested for Tesla as time progresses. But before I break anything down about all this information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. I am personally not a financial planner so take none of this as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble, the link down below and deposit any amount of money into the account, you are guaranteed up to 12 free stocks. The offer ends in just about six days, so check it out before they run out. Anyways, let's break down what's going on with the overall market. So Tesla was down about 2.62% for the day, selling off quite a bit. Tesla made an attempt to bounce off this 200 EMA, and we're getting some signals that suggest that it was getting ready to try to push up. But it ended up failing, if anything, and Tesla's still looking very weak nonetheless. So if anything, guys... Although there are some bullish divergences developing on the charts and on Tesla, it turns out they're not really ready to start bouncing just yet. Uh, we're not really ready yet, and it may take a little bit longer than expected. It may not happen until like later into Friday, if not by Monday, for the real bounce to come. And as of right now, many of these charts are looking very, very weak. So when it comes to Tesla, here's the very simple analysis of it. We are watching this 200 EMA on the four hour time from acting as support. This is the red line down here. This is the support for Tesla. And this was holding Tesla up for most of today. If Tesla had broken below this, this is going to be a very bearish signal. And Tesla is going to start falling to fill its gap all the way down to about 250, if not below that. And then if we bounced off of it, Tesla had the potential to try to make its way up. As of right now, it's looking very, very weak with this head and shoulders like pattern. And there's a good chance that Tesla may continue to sell off even more. But one of the questions that a lot of people are wondering is, is Tesla being shorted more? Is something changing in the data? Is something going on with SPY that's changing? That's why I want to talk about some other important supports to watch for for the whole market before I break down more details on these charts. So for the market, Jerome Powell and the Fed have announced that they may be giving us another rate hike. Now, that's very important because the market was not expecting this or pricing this in. On top of that, the Fed said that they may have to keep rates high for an extended period of time, which was significantly longer than expected and longer than before. Now, that's very important. That ended up hurting the market significantly, and the market's continuing to sell off as I speak. Now, for tomorrow, however, we have some PMI data coming out 15 minutes after the market opens. We have the S&P Global Manufacturing and Global Services data coming out. This will give us more information about how on earth the economy is looking, how these different sectors are looking. And this may cause some volatility for the markets, but I don't know if it's going to be that significant. But just be prepared just in case for the first 15 minutes, there could be some volatility because of this. Uh, other than that, there's not really anything else going on with the data for the markets. Now, when it comes to the overall options chain for SPY, we have something very interesting going on. For tomorrow, we have a very high put-to-call ratio. We have about a 2.22 put-to-call ratio with max pain being at 442. Now, this could change intraday, but as of right now, that's where it is. Now, we have, we have only about 695 calls in the money and about 390,000 calls out of the money. 280,000 puts are in the money and about 590,000 are out of the money. Now, the market makers are technically incentivized to try to hold the market up or try to get us to push towards a max pain. Technically, that would benefit them a bit more. They may try to get more of these like puts out of the money and some calls in the money just to balance this a little bit better. But there are no guarantees because of how aggressive the selling has been been and how fearful the market is being so there is a possibility of us getting some kind of intraday bounce and a push up towards the end of the day but no guarantees and there's no sign of this so far on the charts so i can't make any promises okay so is it possible for that to happen tomorrow yes it is but right now at the time i'm recording this video we have these bullish divergences which are in the process of developing, but there's no sign and no proof of them truly playing out just yet or them playing out for tomorrow. What does that mean? That means that the market looks bearish. It looks very, very weak at the time I am recording this video. We look very weak. Could we bounce tomorrow intraday? It is possible since we have bullish divergences, but we have to see what happens tomorrow before making that claim. So that tells me that the market will most likely bounce possibly tomorrow intraday or by Monday. There should be a bounce coming. But as of right now, there's no sign of the bounce. So that's why I want to talk about some critical supports in just a couple of minutes. The reason why I'm saying that is also because the market is very fearful. The market is continuing to sell off on fear. Market momentum is being driven by fear right now. 
and the VIX managed to close above its 50 EMA and also the 50 moving average again. Those are signals that the market is on a downtrend and there's likely more selling pressure to come as time progresses. Fear is once again dictating this market. It's making up the majority of this price action and momentum. Even the puts and call options are now positioning themselves for fear as the market is slowing down. Tesla had 119 million in volume overall, very close to average. And right now we're starting to see a very flat short volume relative to price ratio, at least from the last day. The data is yet to update for today, but I do anticipate that this got a little bit higher as Tesla started to sell off. Now, looking at the data, there's not really much coming out for now. We're actually two days behind, but we did see some shorting on Tesla. The overall short interest, you guys can see these rectangles on the right side. They're much larger. They're much taller than this side right here. That's because Tesla is being shorted a lot more. And over the last few weeks, the shorts have been continuing to pile in and bash Tesla down. And this is what's negatively affecting it. That makes me a little concerned for the short term as they may try to continue to drag Tesla down. So be very careful when it comes to data like this. On top of this, I just wanted to mention that from a seasonality basis, Tesla is green only about 48% of the time on Fridays. They tend to be a little bit more in favor of the bears. We tend to see high volatility during the 12 o'clock p.m. Eastern time at time and also during 2 o'clock p.m. And finally, the price price ratio is very flat as Tesla is still performing quite equally with the markets. Nothing too crazy has gone on so far. Goldman Sachs is very neutral on Tesla, and there hasn't been anything else coming out since. Uh, Guggenheim, which is another analyst, are saying you should sell your Tesla shares. They were saying this over the last couple of days. They were saying that Tesla may sell off a bit, and that is very, very close to what ended up happening. So, so far, some analysts did say some good or accurate things. But the question is, how will Tesla move going forward? How will the market move? All right. So right now, okay, if we manage to hold above this 200 EMA tomorrow, Tesla could bounce go up to 260 because the market makers could possibly try to pump us. There's a possibility. But at the same time, if Tesla ends up breaking below the 200 EMA and we fail to get above this, Tesla is going to sell off even more aggressively and come all the way down to fill this gap right here. This gap would take Tesla all the way down to potentially this 249 area. And for the full measured move, we could see 240 uh, 246.5 technically is a possibility, but for now, we're just going to be watching like 250 to 249. So those are the two possibilities. What is more likely for Tesla with the head and shoulders and the four hour time from looking this bearish and Tesla looking very weak right now, just barely holding this 200 EMA, the odds do favor it breaking down towards 250 and us seeing more downside. Now, even if Tesla does end up breaking down, if the overall RSI starts trending upwards, we could be forming a double bullish divergence for a bounce either towards the end of the day on Friday, if not by uh, Monday. But as of right now, even if we are set to bounce in the future, before the bounce comes, we could see Tesla sell off towards 250. That's what the charts are suggesting right now. We could see Tesla continue to sell off as it's looking very weak. So we want to watch this very, very carefully. There's going to be a bounce most likely in the future. Okay, I'm, I'm, I really believe that's going to happen. It's just that we could sell off a little bit more first before that bounce ends up coming. And for now, just read the trend as the trend is looking more bearish. And if Tesla does end up holding below this 200, we're going to likely see this thing start dropping towards this gap fill in the 250 area. So it looks more bearish overall. That's what the technicals are suggesting at the time I'm recording this. For SPY, it's looking more bearish because... We ended up hitting 431. We failed to get a bounce off 433. And the overall technicals are looking very weak. Now, 431 is where we have some key support. If that breaks, we're going to come all the way down to 429 or so. I'm sorry. Yeah, 429 or so, most likely. Uh, that's most likely going to be the case. We're looking quite weak right now, just barely holding 431. If we bounce off 431, then we could technically see 433 plus since we do have a bullish divergence, but that all depends on 431. There's a bullish divergence on the RSI, but it's very, very weak, not looking that strong, and we are in very, very oversold territory. But I want to be open-minded nonetheless. If we break below 431, once again, don't forget 429 could come. If we bounce off of it, we could see this thing try to make its way back up uh, to try to push back up. The market makers could try to cause that as we have lots of the puts expiring. But as of right now, regardless of what's going to happen tomorrow, right now the charts look more bearish and it looks like the odds favor 429 on SPY. It looks very weak right now at the time I am recording this. Okay, that, There's no sign of a bounce just yet on this chart. That's why you have to be very open-minded. For Apple stock, this is also looking relatively weak. It's continuing to sell off quite aggressively. And we have this head and shoulders like pattern that is still technically valid. So Apple is going to likely test 173.5 very soon. The daily candlestick on Apple looks more bearish as well. That's something I noticed. So this does favor more downside. But here's the thing about that. 
173.5 is key support. If Apple bounces off of that, we could try to make our way back up to 175 if the market makers try to pump us. If we break below 173.5 tomorrow, I think we're going to be visiting the 171s, okay? So there is still a good chance of downside potentially coming, okay? But I'm going to be open-minded nonetheless just to see which way we end up going. I think we're going to test 173.5 and we'll see if Apple tries to bounce or not. The overall QQQ or the NASDAQ is looking weaker. As you can see, the daily chart is looking very weak as well. And it looks like it may be trying to test this 354 area. But we do have some support at 357 technically, as we're seeing a bullish divergence developing here. If the divergence plays out and we bounce off 357 tomorrow, watch 360 plus. If we reject and start selling off, 354 is a real possibility. What is more probable in my opinion? I think the odds do favor 354 as the chart's looking very weak. If you look at the four hour time frame and look at how weak it's looking, it just continued to sell off with almost no bounce. So 354 seems more probable, but I want to be open minded nonetheless. On uh, NVIDIA, this thing had a bullish divergence on the 30 minutes time frame for some attempts to bounce, uh, but it's looking very weak. It's continuing to sell off and not really giving us confirmation. That tells me that this thing is going to likely continue to sell off most likely. It's looking very, very weak. If we bounce, we could try to get above 410. If we manage to do something like 418 is a possibility. But as of right now, it looks more like NVIDIA is trying to get very close towards this 403 area down here. This is going to be the support to be watching for. We could see 403 to 400 being tested first as this thing is selling off with no bounce. And there's no true sign of a bounce just yet. So 403 is on the table for NVIDIA before it attempts to do so. So watch that very carefully for NVIDIA stock. For Microsoft, it's also looking quite bearish. Uh, we could be watching this retesting 312. That's going to be the next important support if we break below 316. As of right now, although there was a bullish divergence, it failed to break out so if we keep selling off we could still hold the bullish divergence but there could be more downside first before we get a bounce 316 and 312 are some important supports to look for and we look more bearish on microsoft netflix looks more bearish i mean we're just continuing to sell off and we could be watching for this thing to just uh continue to retest this area right here uh we got this big rejection off this 20 ema on netflix it could just kind of trade sideways around this 382 area, but it still looks kind of weak and not really a great bounce so far. For something else such as uh, SPX, I do want to note that we technically have a bullish divergence developing, but there's no sign of it playing out just yet because we look bearish on the four hour and also on the daily uh, chart. We look more bearish. Uh, it may continue to sell off, so there could be more downside first before we get some kind of meaningful bounce. Uh, 43.28 is a real possibility. Could go a little bit lower towards 4,300. Could drop a little bit more first before we get any sort of bounce. So it looks more bearish for now. One thing that is a little good for the markets, though, is the fact that the VIX is currently at the four-hour 200 EMA. I'm sorry, the I think it's the daily 200 EMA. Let me just double check that. We're at resistance right now. And we also have a bearish divergence that developed on the VIX on the four-hour chart. So the VIX tells us that this thing may cool off very soon within the next two days. There's a very high probability of that happening. I think the VIX is going to cool off either on Friday or Monday, which tells me that the stock market should bounce on Friday or Monday. One of those days, most likely, we should be getting a bounce. As of right now, the VIX is holding up, so there's no sign of us rejecting just yet. And we're going to be watching to see how the VIX reacts to this resistance, as we do have a bearish divergence so far. So the best thing I could tell you is just to be open-minded. Watch and see how the VIX reacts, and we will see if the VIX rejects off the 200 EMA or not. Uh, as of right now, it's holding up. There's a bearish divergence here, but there's no sign of it rejecting just yet. So just watch for it. Be very, very patient, and we will see on the VIX. I do believe looking at the fact that it's up 15%, we're going to most likely see the VIX sell off either Friday or Monday. Tell me the market should bounce on one of those days, maybe later on Friday, if not by Monday. But as of right now, there's no sign of the bounce starting, so I can't really make the claim until we see the charts tomorrow. Looking at the dollar, it's looking very flat. It's not really doing much. It's very indecisive. It's not helping us too much. Uh, looking at Coinbase, this thing is looking kind of weak right now. It made an attempt to bounce, but failed. So on the four-hour time frame, if this thing keeps selling off, we could be seeing 72 then potentially 70 being retested. Those are some very important levels to be watching for. Uh, on top of that, if you look at Google, Google's also looking kind of weak. Uh, if it fails at 131, then 130 is a real possibility. 
And if 130 fails us, I mean, 129 is going to come. It looks like it's going to test 130 first before it tries to bounce, but it's still looking kind of weak. Still looking more bearish overall in the four hour time from no sign of a bounce just yet. So we have to wait for that. Amazon's looking more bearish. As it just hit like 128. We have this 126 key support if 128 breaks. That's the historical support of this imbalance. Amazon looks like it could test 126 if 128 breaks. So watch that very carefully for tomorrow. As of right now, it's sold off with no sign of a bounce. So there's no way I could call a bounce just yet on Amazon. And last but, not, last but not least for Meta, this thing failed to get a bounce. It made an attempt. It really wanted to, but it failed, unfortunately. So because it failed, uh, it got this rejection. We're going to be watching 292 as key support. If that fails for Meta, 290 is going to be on the table. So watch this very carefully. If 290 breaks, then 286 is another possibility. We're going to be very, very patient with this. We're going to be watching to see if that ends up being the case. But watch 292 as support, then 290. And with that said, guys, please watch your levels very, very carefully. So the market is looking relatively weak. Uh, we're still not holding up nicely. Tesla's looking very weak on the four hour time for just barely holding the 200 EMA. We will see if we bounce off this or not. As of right now, at the time I'm recording this, the chart looks weak and the odds do favor Tesla breaking below the 200. But watch that for confirmation for tomorrow to see which way we go. Watch the 200 EMA on the four hour chart. That's going to tell you which way the market goes, which way Tesla goes. And that's going to be very key for tomorrow. All right. So we will see if the market gets some kind of bounce for Friday or not. As of right now, the market looks more bearish, so we're not ready just yet, but we'll see tomorrow what ends up happening. All right, so watch those levels that I mentioned very carefully. We will see what happens. Do what you have to do, guys, and I'll see you guys very soon for the next video tomorrow morning. Thank you, and peace out.